along with his brother Michael, who shares the role. So Paul is a third generation owner of the business and has the fourth generation actively involved in working in the business now. His talk will focus on their family's unique approach that he and his brother took in passing the succession torch to the fourth generation. Welcome, Paul. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have uh, to set the table here. Those of you who are thinking of succession uh, and or have determined that they want to deal with succession, uh, then you should probably listen to what I have to say. For those of you who have no plans for succession, I would suggest this is a good time to start to figure out how you can get a free sample from uh, Mr. Oliver. <laughs> okay, so the uh, idea here about succession uh, is passing the torch. And uh, the real uh, dilemma of the statistics that are out there shows that there are really bad odds around the concept of succession. Uh, in our case, we've been 100 years in business, and uh, to going from the third to the fourth generation has a 3% chance of success. Well, the, it doesn't have to be a game of luck. Uh, you need to treat succession like you would your business. You need to be very formal and planned and thoughtful about how you're going to go about it. And I leave you, or I start with the, this particular thought, one that my brother and I have, and that is that we are custodians of the family business. We didn't start the business, we didn't create uh, the business from the beginning, which is one of the toughest parts of any family business. Our father, who inherited uh, the business and developed it from his uh, father, uh, gave Michael and I a great leg up in uh, developing our business. So we don't look at it from the standpoint that it's really ours. It's really ours to be custodians of and hopefully pass on to the next generation. So I wanted to start with the concept around, uh, you know, who is, sorry, uh, who, who is the, the generations. And uh, I start on the, uh, my grandfather who started the business in 1912 in the wholesale grocery business under the name of Higgins and Burke. Then my father uh, came into the business in 1929, along with his three, two, two siblings, two brothers, and a brother-in-law. And then in 1993, uh, Michael and I took over the business. We're now uh, into our 45th year. Uh, and we're now in the process of figuring out that transition to the fourth generation. I have three children. My brother has no children. Uh, and so the three uh, potential uh, heirs to the throne will be my three children. And we're working our way through that process, hopefully learning from the past and being able to apply all the great things that CAFE previously and FX, uh, FEX is teaching us today. So I wanted to give you a little bit of insight around uh, the, uh, the company uh, and, and where we're at. Uh, and we're 100 years, 105 years into our business. Uh, we have a, a strong uh, business. We're the fourth largest roaster in North America. We're the largest tea packer in Canada. And we're the largest private label and tea manufacturer in North America. Uh, commodity expertise, which is focused around coffee, tea, and complementary beverages. Uh, and our marketplace is North America. We uh, uh, produce over 2 billion cups of tea each year and 12 billion cups of coffee. We ship over 22 million cases and we employ over 1,000 people. Our brands uh, that you would recognize um, would be Brown Gold, Higgins & Burke, Marley, Martinson, Mother Parkers, China Mist, Real Cup, and Wolfgang Puck. A lot of our brands you wouldn't recognize because they are private label brands under other people's names, but we have a good chance that uh, one of your cups of coffee or tea today will come from our uh, business. The common barriers to succession planning, well, there's three of them. Conflict between the family uh, and business values, the 
fear of losing identity, and no form for communication. And unfortunately, in the case of uh, our father and his siblings and uh, my grandfather, uh, that transition did not go terribly well. Uh, they ended up in a situation where it became quite a public display uh, of dispute. Um, and if you look at the rationale and the reasons why that maybe didn't go so well, uh, I'd have to say it all boils down to the fact that there was no communication and there was no FEX to help, uh, help you along the way. So there were some great learnings that came out of that, uh, learnings that our uh, father put into play. And one of the things he did is he wanted to make sure that uh, his transition was going to be fair. He wanted to make sure the transition was clear and he wanted to make sure that we all understood it. But more importantly, we had an opportunity to comment on it or offer up other thoughts if we were uncomfortable with it. So he took quite a bit of time to do that. Uh, his formal way of doing that was to organize a cocktail party uh, to explain that. We're Irish, so that explains the cocktail party. <clears throat> and at that time, he gave each of us a document outlining how he was going to go about it. He made sure that he included all of the family members. So my three sisters, my brother and I, but most importantly, all of the spouses. And that's an important element. And he was very open in looking for their comments and feedbacks, feedback as well. The letter that you see here is the one that he wrote to us, and it had three basic uh, tenets in it. He described what he wanted to happen with the business, which that Michael and I would become the ultimate owners of it. But he, so he passed over the uh, common shares at a zero value because we were starting from day one. But he said each year he would recognize the value or the growth in the business by compensating each of my sisters so that they weren't left behind. <clears throat> Upon his demise, the business, the preferred shares, would go equally to uh, all of uh, the family members. And the uh, growth part of it, which had they've already been paid for, would be Michael and ours. And that it, uh, through an organized approach, uh, Michael and I could undertake to buy out our sisters, which we have since done so. So the real key to his uh, plan and success at that point in time was the fact that he gave everybody a clear vision and roadmap as to where we were going. And then he gave everybody the opportunity to comment. And as he said, he didn't want, after the fact, people bringing up their concerns or their problems or their issues, that the time to resolve them was now. <clears throat> because he didn't want the same thing that happened to his family to happen to us. And he always said to us that the most important uh, element uh, of our lives is our family, and that's a network that you have to protect at all costs, and money is secondary. So that was his approach, which was a successful one. So we started out with an unsuccessful one, we had a successful one, and now <clears throat> we're at a stage where uh, Michael and I are thinking of succession and acting upon it. And I'll say we've been working at this for uh, about 10 years. So what do we want to achieve? Well, we want the family-owned business to continue to operate as a family business. We want to make sure that we have uh, good governance and we want to ensure that the Mother Parker employees are protected. That's an important element. If you look at any family disasters, there's usually a situation where the employees get infected by those uh, disputes and eventually the business becomes uh, less successful or it maybe even goes out of business. So one of the things Michael and I adopted early on was that if uh, any of my children wanted to come into the business, that they had to be introduced to what we call the code of conduct, which was really the rules of the game of which they were entering into the business. And if they didn't like it, then they don't have to join on. But the, the code of conduct is really quite simple. You are an employee and you will be treated as an employee. You're expected to give it your best effort. You're expected to treat everyone with respect, including your siblings and you have no entitlement or ownership in the business. And that anything that happens in the business does not affect what happens in the family. 
And if, for whatever reason, you're asked to leave the business, that will not in any way, shape, or form um, create a problem as far as the family dynamics or your ability to uh, inherit whatever might be in store. And so each uh, came on board understanding that that is uh, their obligation. There was no entitlement. And uh, like every other employee in the business, they had to work to gain uh, advancement uh, within the company. So we wanted to uh, provide a, a strong foundation for the next generation. And uh, through the facilities that CAFE, previous to FX, provided, we learned a lot about uh, what some of the options might be to do that and how we might go forward. So one of the things we decided early on is that we would make a move in our succession earlier rather than later. Um, I may look a little old, but I'm actually quite young inside. Uh, both Michael and I are uh, uh, 65 and 66, and we decided that we wanted to do it while we were capable uh, for two reasons. One your mind works better the younger you are. But more importantly, if it didn't work out with uh, some form of outside manager in the business, that we could go back and give it another try. So uh, approximately two years ago, we uh, brought on a skilled uh, professional president uh, to instill good business practices and to, more importantly, mentor the next generation. And that was clearly outlined in our criteria, hiring criteria for the uh, individual. Uh, and the reason for that is twofold. One is we all know as parents, for those of you who are parents and have children in the business, that it is difficult to uh, teach and train your children without emotion, mainly because you know them so well and they know you so well. And you've had over the years many tense situations <coughs> whatever that might be. Uh, and so that's a dynamic that makes it difficult to teach and train. And Michael and I learned that as we worked with our father for uh, over uh, 40 years. <clears throat> the second part of that is Michael and I have been engaged in the business since we left school, so that's 45 years. So everything we've learned has been learned from being inside the business. We wanted to bring a fresh perspective to the business. We wanted new talent professional uh, ways uh, to come in and start to move the business forward. And there's no better way to do that than to bring in an outsider. Second part of our succession plan is to develop a board of directors. We currently have had a board of advisors, which for any of you who haven't got a board of any sort, I fully encourage you to start with a board of advisors. It'll be the best thing you ever do. The Board of Advisors will now transition to a Board of Directors, which is a whole different set of governance and responsibility. <clears throat> but what that does is that sets up the situation for Michael and I, whether we're in the business or not in the business, <clears throat> whether we're capable or, or don't wish to participate, that the business will have a guiding hand and a uh, chance of succeeding going forward. And we wanted to make sure that we trained our um, uh, next generation to be good operators, but more importantly, good owners. So what will success look for, like for us? Well, we want um, to develop a path for being a good custodians for our children, or my children. So we're t constantly talking about that concept that, you know, whatever you get, try and do the best you can with it, try and build it, but try and pass it on to the next generation because our ultimate goal is we would like to see the com company um, go on for many more generations and, and hopefully celebrate perhaps a 200 year anniversary. Uh, we wanted uh, to develop a situation where there is a formal plan in place for the fourth generation uh, to move forward. So, uh, the Parts that are going to be the most important for the next move forward <coughs> is to make sure that at the proper point in time, each of my children are ready to take on the roles that they have chosen. So one of the things that we did was we sat down with each of them and put them through uh, professional testing, first to find out about their capabilities and uh, their uh, interests. Uh, which was fully shared with them. 
And then we challenged them to think clearly about what did they want to do in life and what do they want to do within the family business. Um, all three have worked in the business for five or six or seven years. My son Paul has chosen to uh, leave the business and go out and try his own hand at being an entrepreneur. Um, my two daughters are in the business and they've chosen to stay in the business. Uh, the eldest, who lives in Calgary, has said that she doesn't really want to have the most senior position and the responsibility that goes with that, but would like to play a senior role. My uh, middle child, uh, also my daughter, um, has said that she would like to be the CEO or, and the leader of the company. So now that everyone's kind of got a sense of where they want to be, now we are in the form of making sure that the training is underway. And our hope is that that training will go well and in the uh, period of say five to ten years that the next generation will in fact be uh, involved in managing the day-to-day -day operations. Um, but at the same time we want to train them up to be uh, very good um, owners. Uh, so in the case of my son, who perhaps may not be in the business actively, we want to make sure that, they, that he is a good owner, as is my two daughters. So what they will be doing is observing our, uh, they have been observing our board of advisors, and they will observe the board of directors so that they learn from that. And one unique element that we've been able to work out with another family business who has a board of directors is we're going to have an exchange uh, program where they will send us one of their uh, uh, fourth generation and we will send them one of ours and they will sit as observers uh, on those um, two family businesses to learn from each other's differences. And so the, the next part of our, uh, our journey is to, uh, to get that training done and to move forward to make sure that um, success is within our grasp but as we all know, uh, there is no guarantees. So, lessons learned. My uh, advice is start early, determine what you want to achieve, put it down on paper, be clear and communicate with all possible stakeholders. Communication is number one. Pressure test it, make sure that it looks like it's a good plan and then keep evolving and refreshing it. So even though Michael and I are working towards a bit of a succession plan, it's never ever done and it will change and keep changing and we will keep reviewing it and bringing it forward and we will be looking for the best advice we can get from the people that we respect and around us. So the <clears throat> closing remarks that I have for you is that uh, one of the things that I think has been successful from our business standpoint, the three generations and hopefully the fourth generation, is the element of passion. My grandfather had it, our father had it, my brother and I definitely have it. I wouldn't want to do anything else, it's way too much fun. Our dreams, our dreams are that the business will continue and see it 200 years under the um, guise of our fourth generation family business and that they too will do a good plan to hopefully have a fifth, or sixth, and seventh generation. But by that point in time, it'll be passed on and it'll become their responsibility. Fears, and this is the biggest element of my concern, is I would hate to think that the family business creates um, a, divide, a divider between family members and that there is that greed and, and entitlement encroach into their thinking. And uh, that is what we're trying to avoid at all costs. So the last little uh, piece that I'll leave with you is my brother, who is a, a co-CEO, so we, we operate the business together, uh, who isn't here with me today. Uh, he is an inventor, and I want to tell you a little bit about him because he's a great guy. But uh, he invented uh, um, a product called the Circumventor. Now I can see from the glazed eyes everybody is saying, what the hell is a circumventor? Well, it's a bicycle without a seat or handlebars, and it's for the small businessman who's lost his ass and has nowhere to turn. Thank you very much.